The community wanted to do something, something big and something fast. Initially, Finger High School's principal, Ms. Dozier, requested that an Adopt-A-Block initiative be created at Finger. Her vision was for concerned citizens who were committed to keeping students safe to be organized and then assigned to man select street corners that the school identified as hot spots in the neighborhood where violence was most likely to erupt. Community members came out in groves to be trained by Chicago Alternative Policing Strategy, also known as CAPS. CAPS also distributed bright yellow and orange city vests to those who completed the training so that volunteers could be uniformed and easily identified by students and community members. Tijuana Piper, who runs team programs from Here's Life Inner City out of the Agape Community Center on 111th Street, recommended a program to be spearheaded by Carolyn Elaine, an acclaimed mosaicist and Finger alum. After hearing about the tragedy in the community due to violence involving students from Finger, Carolyn Elaine wanted to come back and make a difference. The name of this project is Restoring the Pieces. And the acronym PIECES is for, um, or it means, people inspired, encouraging community empowerment and strength. She and proposed to do a community art mosaic project in order to facilitate and initiate the healing process for all community stakeholders. Art has a very innate healing property. Um, it allows you to to kind of get freed up, you know, and step into a space where you can just be creative and be expressive. And it's a nonviolent self-expression also, and that's a lot of what's missing too in our schools. Um, she was a Finger alumni and that she was, had this great idea to build a mural and that she really wanted to take um, something that had happened that was the way Finger was portrayed so negatively, she really wanted to take the project to the next level or take her, take this project to the next level in a really positive way for kids. In order for this initiative to be you know, successful, it had to be student-led and adult-facilitated. The first step was to get buy-in from primarily three audiences. First and most importantly, the students. Then the school's principal and staff and finally, the office of school turnaround. It, it, it's so grassroots, and, it, and it's a healing process. And I think just the power of being able to tell the story of, of just the strength of the students, the strength of the alums, the strength of the community with your voices and visually will be the only thing that will change people's minds. You'd be surprised. The initial student engagement was with two student groups at Finger peers reaching other students known as pros and the Titan Action Committee. They bought into the idea right away, expressing a desire and a need to have their voices heard. Mm -hmm. Like that's why I like this project with the mosaic because like this is something that everybody can put their thought into, put their feeling into and receive something different, but at the same time putting in the same effort as everybody else. Mm -hmm. So for everybody to come together for the same cause and come out with a great effect on everybody. And as I explained to the students, when I say restoring the pieces, I'm in no way saying that there's anything wrong with our, our young people. What's wrong is that we have not come back to the community, um, come back home to support our young people and to guide our young people. Yeah. Because adults were brought together for a meeting about the proposed project. The adults consisted of parents, local pastors, school administrators, community-based organization representatives, and representatives from the Office of School Turnaround. This not only is good to happen, it has to happen. It has to happen. Yes, it has to happen. But then we also need to go out and do some research. The three-month project consisted of parents and student workshops, guided by genealogist Tony Burroughs, a core group of students journeyed back through documents and photographs to uncover their family legacy, the history of the school, and the history of the community. Students were encouraged to journal, create photo albums and scrapbooks, and audio tape interviews as a means of preserving and passing down their family history to future generations. I know that my last name, Thomas, comes from the Bible, and Marie, um, I think that's from the Bible too, but I really don't know because it's just something that every female in my family gets. Most kids down. live for today, and uh, they don't understand there was a past. They don't understand that there's a future. They just live for today. 
So having them go into their past, finding out who their ancestors are, I think it gives them real value and meaning. Dude, let's blow it out. <laughs> Cheryl Graves with the Community Justice for Youth Institute facilitated weekly peace circles, providing a safe space for dialogue about matters that students are dealing with and really care about. The students sat in circle uh, and had an opportunity to express themselves and experience themselves as being heard. You know, a lot of our young people feel that no one hears them, that they really don't have a voice and what they have to say is not important. So that process really opened them up and gave them an opportunity to just talk about uh, what had happened not only this past school year, but just what's happening in the community and in their lives in general. These circles were open to parents and extended family, faculty and volunteers. They ended with a shared meal, providing an opportunity for students to practice proper etiquette and social skills. All right, this is my version. Carolyn Elaine and Nina Smooth Kane created the artistic composition based on information and images gathered during the weekly sessions. The north wall of the cafeteria was chosen as the site for the mosaic because every student visits the cafeteria at least once a day. Um, I was really hesitant about putting it in the cafeteria. I felt that all the kids pass through here and also parents and visitors. And so um, after long conversations, I'm a very, you know, I'm me. And so after long conversations um, and the actual the logistics of it, right, and actually the implementation of putting it on this wall would not work, like it, it just the mural would not stick, um, I gave up. I said, okay, fine, we'll put it in the cafeteria. And actually it was, it was a battle. I'm really happy I lost. With the oh, yeah, here she is. Even got my ID on here. That's what she like. Yeah. Oh. The fabrication process was open to the larger student body, alumni and community volunteers. Students across all grade levels participated. The school's art teachers spent time on the wall with students rotating their classes and select students into the cafeteria to work. They learned how to prepare materials, which included prepping and sanding the wall, enlarging images to scale, cutting mirrors, breaking and sorting tile, working with specific tools, and grouting materials. Then we're gonna put something in between it anyway, so it don't matter. Okay. I don't want to be messing up the you know. It's, it's kind of hard to mess up broken pieces no, of tile. No, I mean, I don't want all that extra to be like right there. It, it's it's cool. okay. It's cool about it. When she told me about it, I'm like, um, let me see what you're going to do. Because I didn't think that the students actually had hands on. I thought that it would be, you know, teachers and instructors here to actually do it. She, she said, no, we're doing it, you know, ourselves. The grand finale consisted of a community weekend event. Adrian Hawk, class of 78, was instrumental in reaching out to other Finger alumni and enrolling them to work with students to grout the mural. Dennis Alexander, class of 80, engaged the Cook County Juvenile Justice Department in partnering with the project by supporting the peace rally, which served as the culminating event. It's definitely been a healing process, not only the physical aspect of it, but the preparing for it and the, uh, the peace circles. I have been able to speak to many of the students who have taken part of the process, and you can tell that this has been what they needed. This has been what they've been waiting for, to give some closure to all of the negativity that's occurred over the last year. Over 200 people were in attendance for the peace rally, and peace circles were held simultaneously all over the school. The value of this collaborative effort has brought a renewed sense of time and place into the community as they work through the healing and reconciliation of the loss of their fellow classmates to violence. Quotes such as, you are the sum total of the choices you have made, are placed within the mosaic as a subtle reminder that they are empowered to choose their own legacy. This 700 square feet mural now serves as a backdrop for their everyday lives. The composition gives students the means to stand and be fortified by their cultural and ancestral background as they strive to reconcile the events of their past and declare themselves in the present moment using restorative justice as a strategy for peace. While the tangible, finished artwork is beautiful, it is the process that will be remembered in hearts and minds 
for a long time. While the death of every child lost to violence is worthy of media attention, the impact on the community and fellow classmates is often obscured by false perceptions and stereotypes. Not all students at Finger High School are involved in violence and gang-related activities, yet they carry the burden of that stereotype. One of the goals of this project was to help shift the negative view of Finger students that was disseminated around the world. This project was featured on Chicago and with Bill Campbell and in the August issue of Ebony Magazine. The peace rally and mural celebration received national media coverage from National Public Radio, also known as NPR. I can only hope that in some small way, we have begun to change the negative view by creating an experience and work of art that honors the memory of Darian Albert and all of the children who have fallen victim to senseless violence while providing others with an opportunity to see the endless potential of our students. It is so funny to look back at these pictures, Director. But what this project showed was that the students do care. The students do have a heart. The students do want to be um, given the opportunity to be able to show that. And this project definitely did that. People were judging the school based on what they saw in the media, but they haven't seen the school inside to actually judge us because it's actually a wonderful school. I feel as if it's a wonderful, a very good school. I think it was absolutely overblown. I mean, the finger was, um, the way the media had portrayed it was one of the reasons why Chicago had lost the Olympics. Absolutely, you know, not true. You cannot, you cannot blame um, my students for the reason why we lost the Olympics. I think they were portrayed in a very negative light.